what we're looking at, this is a personal food computer. This was built by my team at Method based off of a concept from MIT in the States. Um, and and yeah, so this is a, a, a tabletop size food growing chamber. Um, this allows us to basically t take the climate of a different place, right, and sort of import that into the box. It has embedded robotics and sensors inside that allow it to uh, es essentially take that climate, right, and, and, um, and, and create the conditions for that crop on the inside. For instance, if this is sitting in, in here in London and we're growing some tomatoes, we'd be able to take, let's say, the, the lighting conditions, the humidity, the, the air temperature, things like that from, let's say, Tuscany, a Tuscan hillside, and grow a Tuscan, delicious Tuscan tomato right here in London. So it's not a popcorn machine, just to yeah. be clear. Our first audience, <laughs> first guest thought it was a popcorn machine when he walked past it. Right, much, much, much greater than a popcorn much machine. More yeah. <laughs> much more sophisticated. Much more sophisticated, yeah. What can you grow in it uh, on scale, by scale? Because one of the issues as we talk about food scarcity, how to counteract some of the challenges that you need to achieve scale. I know it's a concept, but how big could this actually become? Yeah, so the, the, the really the value of this food computer is not it, not just what it can grow inside, but what it learns about the food and what, how it can then uh, attribute that to other um, other types of farming, like like vertical farming. So essentially, the data is what's it's what's mo most important here. So the, the 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 personal food computer itself, we can scale this by creating more of them. Um, it, we you know we we would be able to you know have different crops. Let's say you have this in, in somebody's home, like a family or something like that. Um, but but really, what's what's most important about this is is the ability to learn from the food and to to use this as almost like a testing tool, so that we can. Um, be able to get the most out of what we grow uh, and, and um, essentially take that to different parts of the planet that might not have the right exterior climate conditions. Mm. That makes sense. And in terms of the data that you use, I mean, there's been so much talk about the impact that data can have on the farming agriculture industry. I remember when Monsanto first announced Climate Corp, this was really billed as the potential Amazon of the agriculture world. So how, how much access, how much data do we have at the moment around agriculture and, and how is this uh, used, how is it necessary for this product? Absolutely, yeah. So, so right now, the way that the, that the food computer works is it, it uses something called a, a, a climate recipe. Right? So a climate recipe is a set of instructions that tell the food computer how to essentially grow. Um, and the, the, the data that, that um, that's coming from is basically from a, the open source community. Right? This is something that's quite new. But we know that, that, that vertical farms have lots of, of data that, that they're um, you know, st starting to, to harvest from this. So really the, the core here is that we're able to take that data that we're learning from these boxes, spread that uh, around, around the planet, right, and, and learn from many different sources, and then use that then to go in, back into vertical farms and, and even to augment traditional farming with, with things like small robots. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.